Hello and welcome back. Like last lesson, we're going to find volumes of solids of revolution, but we're spinning them about axes that aren't necessarily the x and y axes. Because we don't always have to revolve around the x axis or the y axis to find the volume, we can pick a line parallel to either axis. Let's start with a horizontal axis of revolution. To rotate about a horizontal line, y equals c, we need to find an outer radius and an inner radius as a function of x and integrate along the x-axis. What does that look like? As you can see, we have this line y equals c way up above the area that we're going to be revolving. And that is our axis of revolution. So like the washer method, we're gonna have a big R, a big radius, and then a smaller radius where the hole is created. So the bigger radius is gonna be from the axis of revolution all the way to the far side of the area that is being rotated. And the length of that distance is the distance from y equals c to the x-axis. Now, to find the little radius or the inner radius, it gets a little bit tricky because we still have this distance all the way to the x-axis, but what we have to do is subtract the height of the function here to give us just this whole area right here. So that would be c minus the height of the function. So as long as you're thinking about finding the distance from the axis of rotation, you're gonna do great. And then it's very similar to what we were doing last time. Remember the area of a circle is pi r squared. So our formula here is, let me clean this up. So our formula here is pi on the outside and then our limits of integration, and then we have big R squared minus little r squared, and we are integrating in terms of x. Okay, let's do this other one here, because this time our axis of revolution is below the x-axis. We're still gonna find the distance, but it might look a little bit different. So the distance this time is going to be the height of the function plus the distance continued to the line y equals c. So it's the function plus c. And then the little distance is just the distance between the x-axis and c. So just c. And once we find our big R and our little r, we can just set up the integral as we've been doing before, pi, and then big R squared minus little r squared in terms of x. Now sometimes we're gonna have an area between two functions that's being rotated. So here's our y equals c pretty far above the x-axis, and that's our axis of rotation. But this time, well, it's a little bit different. So our big R has to make it all the way to the farthest function from y equals c. And in order to figure out what that is, what we're basically gonna do is take the distance all the way to the x-axis, which is c, and then just subtract the height of that far function, c minus g of x. And then similarly, for the other one, we're gonna take the whole distance to the x-axis, that's c, and we're gonna subtract the height of the closer function. So that's c minus f of x. Once we have those distances worked out, then the integral becomes pretty simple because we're getting used to this. Pi times the integral of big R squared minus little r squared in terms of x. So let's do this again, but here we are way below the x-axis. Our farthest function from the axis of rotation this time is f of x. 
So we have to make it all the way from f of x to the x-axis and then continue another c <laughs> to get the distance of that line. And then for the inner one, we have to go from g of x to the x-axis and then another c distance to get the inner radius. So we've got c plus f of x and c plus g of x. And then we can integrate as usual. So let's try a couple actual examples here. Example one, find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the following region around the line y equals four. So our solid is gonna be y equals the square root of x between y equals zero and x equals four. So our axis of rotation is up here. To find the big radius, we're going all the way from the axis right down to the x-axis. Ah, well, that's a height of four. And then the inner radius is all the way down to the x-axis, but we have to subtract out the height of the function, okay? So that's four minus the square root of x. Let me clean that up. And this is a calculator question, so that's lovely. That's gonna make it easy. We're um, differentiating in terms of x, so we'll go from zero to four. There's our big R squared minus little r squared. Pop that all into the calculator. We get a volume of 108.908. Let's try another one. So what are we rotating here? We're rotating around the line y equals negative one and we're rotating the function four minus x squared, and we have y equals zero as a boundary. So interesting here is we're gonna actually have to figure out our x bounds, and that's where y equals zero and four minus x squared, where they intersect. So that's gonna be negative two and two. So we've got that figured out. Now we need to figure out our outer radius and our inner radius. So the outer radius, once again, we're going all the way down. We need the height of the function. And then we're going past the x-axis, another one. So we've got one plus the height of the function. So that's five minus x squared. And then the inside radius is just Okay, pop that into our integral and pop that into your calculator. We're just mostly setting these up and popping them into the calculator today because the setup is the hardest part. Okay, so now let's switch gears a little bit and do a vertical axis of revolution. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna find a big R and a little r. And the process is really the same. Just looks maybe a little bit different because we're going sideways instead of up and down. So this one on the left, we have our axis of revolution here at x equals c. And again, we're finding distances. So the big R or the outer radius is the distance from the y axis to our axis of rotation going this way. And so that's just um, C. And then our little guy will take the entire distance from the y-axis to the line x equals C, but then we have to take out the height, or in this case, the width of the function. So C minus F of Y. And notice with a vertical axis of rotation, we're gonna be doing everything in terms of y. But the rest is the same, isn't it? We've got pi, and then the integral, big R squared minus little r squared. This time though, dy. If the axis of rotation is to the left of the y-axis, then to find the big R, we need to get to the y-axis, that's like a distance of c, isn't it? And then keep going the height of the function. So c plus f of y. And then the little guy, 
uh, we just have to get we just have to get to the y-axis. So that's a distance of c, and then we can integrate as usual. Again, when you're doing an area between curves, that can get a little interesting. But again, we're just looking for distances, so take your time. So the big guy, let's use blue. So the big guy here, um, we have to get from our axis of revolution to the farthest part of the function from that axis. So we'll take the entire distance, right, from the y-axis to the axis of rotation, and then we have to subtract the height of the function. So let me clean that up. So that's c minus g of y. And then to find the little guy, same thing. We're going to take the entire distance to the y-axis, and then we have to take off the height of the function. So c minus f of y. And then again, big r squared minus little r squared, and all is well in the world. All right, let's try this one from the left side. To get to the big R, we need to cross this distance, that's C, and then continue to the farthest part of the function. So that's gonna be C plus F of Y, and then the little r will be C plus G of Y. So I hope you're getting the hang of it. Let's try some actual problems. All right, so find the volume approximation of the solid generated by rotating the region bounded by y equals the cube root of x, the x-axis, and the line x equals 1 about the line x equals 2. It's just a lot of words, but here's our axis of revolution at x equals 2. So we're zipping around this way. And if we're going to go around an axis of revolution that's parallel to the y-axis, then we're going to be doing y-bounds. And so it looks like that's going to go between 0 and 1. And that's the intersection of the line x equals 1 and the line y equals the cube root of x. The first thing we're going to have to do, because we're going around the y-axis, is to change this into an x equals in terms of y. So that means we're working with x equals y cubed. And I will clean this up and we'll find some distances. So the far distance, we're going to have to go all the way to the y-axis and then subtract the height of the function. So we've got 2 minus y cubed. And then the inside distance is just going to be this right here between 1 and 2. So that's just a distance of one. So we've got big R, little r. We're going from zero to one. Pop that all into your calculator and there we have it again, 6.7319. So once we get the big R and the little r figured out, then I'm going through this secondary process pretty quickly. So pause the video if you need to, to just write it all down. Okay, what are we doing here? We've got y equals x squared and the line y equals 4, and we're going about the line x equals 3. So what is that? <laughs> All right, so we're doing y bounds, and our y bounds, as you can see, we're going right here. So from 0 to 4, because that is the intersection of y equals x squared and y equals 4, and we're going about the line x equals 3, Okay, so that's over here. There we go. And this one's interesting because, well, the first thing we have to do is figure out this um, function in terms of x. So that's x equals plus or minus the square root of y. But this gets interesting because we're working with distance, right? So our big radius, we've got, we've got to get all the way from the line x equals 3 to the y-axis and then keep going to the function. So that's going to be 3 plus the square root of y. 
even though this part of the function is technically like negative root y, because we're working with distance, we're going to add 3 plus the square root of y. And then we clean it up again. And then the little guy, that one's going to be the distance to the y axis minus the height of the function. So 3 minus the square root of y. And again, we're going from 0 to 4. We've got big R squared minus little r squared. So we'd get a volume of 2.01.0619. All right, what do we have here? We've got, we're bounded by y equals 2 root x and y equals x. Okay, so that's a couple different functions. And our axis of revolution is x equals negative 2. Okay, so first of all, let's make sure both of our equations are in terms of y. The line is fine. y equals x, x equals y. But this guy, y equals 2 times the square root of x, if we rearrange that to be in terms of y, we get x equals the quantity, 1 half y squared. And so now we can figure out our big and small radii. So the far function from the axis of revolution is going to be the line. So we've got to cross the distance to the y-axis and then keep going a smidge to the line x equals y. So that's 2 plus y. And then for the little guy, we'll cross the distance and get to the function 1 half y squared. So 2 plus 1 half y squared, which is 2 plus 1 fourth y squared. And we're doing y bounds. So the intersection of these two functions, 0 and 4. So we get a volume of 60.3185. This time, our region is bounded by x equals e to the y, okay, x equals 1 and y equals 1, about the line y equals 1. So now we're back parallel to the x-axis. So we're going to have to rearrange this guy to be a y equals. So that's going to be oh, y equals the natural log of x and y equals 1, about the line y equals 1. Now see, this is very interesting because it's butted up right against the axis of revolution. Okay, so what do we do about that? Well, let's just do what we've been doing before. We'll find our big radius, our big radius. So that's going from the axis of revolution to the x-axis and then just subtracting the height of the function. So one minus ln x and then the inner radius, there just isn't one because it butts right up against the axis of revolution. So actually, the outer radius is just the only one. You could have a big R or a little r, and there just is no inner radius. So now it's just pi, and then our integration, r squared. And we'll pop that all into the calculator, and there we have a volume of 1.3715. All right, so this time we're bounded by the cube root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 8, about the line x equals 8. All right, so we have a vertical axis of revolution, but we're just button up against it here. We have y bounds because we're going about something parallel to the y-axis. So we're going from 0 to 2. And before we start, we're going to have to take our function and get it in terms of y. So x equals y cubed. And then our big radius would go all the way between the y-axis and the axis of revolution. But we've got to subtract the height of the function. So that's 8 minus y cubed. And then an inner radius, because it butts up right against our axis of revolution, well, there just is none. So there we have a volume of 2.58.5081. Okay, one more. What are we doing here? So we've got bounded by 2 root x, y equals 6, and the y-axis about the line y equals 6. Okay, so we have a horizontal axis of revolution. So that's going to be in terms of x. So we'll be going from 0 to 9. And we're already in terms of x. That's good. 
So our big radius is going to be the distance to the x-axis minus the height of the function. And then the little radius, there is none. And we get a volume of 169.646. So just take your time to find big R, find little r, think about distance. And then at the end of the day, you've just got pi, an integral, big R squared minus little r squared, and then either dx or dy, and you're good to go. Thanks for being here.